Hi all, Larry Feldman here. Uh, in this video, we're going to write a Python program to calculate the area of a triangle. And we're going to give the user three options to do that. Um, I, I recorded a video where I discussed three main formulas utilized to calculate the area of triangles. And um, we're going to give the user the option to use um, any of those methods, depending upon what information they know. So uh, let's get started. As usual, let's, uh, let's give it a title, Triangle Area, Author Name, and Date. Then let's import some libraries and as I've explained um, in the past but it's worth repeating, uh, libraries are um, sections of code that have been written already and supplied by Python for free so that we don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel. So let's tell the user what we're doing. Print this program will calculate the area of a triangle. Sounds simple, but <clears throat> since we're using three different methods, there's actually more to this than it sounds. Print, enter one if you know the base and height. Print enter two if you know two sides and the angle they form, or three print uh, print enter three if you know all three sides. So let's define a variable type, which is equal to the integer version or the integer translation of the input that's supplied, where we tell the user or we prompt the user to enter one, two, or three. Okay, now let's check for invalid inputs. If type is not equal to 1 and type is not equal to 2 and type is not equal to 3, we have an error. And actually, instead of using an if statement, I'm going to uh, use a while statement, which I discussed briefly in some other videos, but um, I want to include here because you'll see that it makes the program a little bit more usable. Instead of killing the program, you know, uh, sending an output error message and then and then ending the program, what we're going to do is simply repeat this statement. So let me copy and paste it here. So what this means is that while the type is not 1 and it's not 2 and it's not 3, meaning the user didn't enter uh, one, of the, one of the numbers that was requested, we're going to prompt the user again to enter 1, 2, or 3. Okay, let's save this and run. I just want to show you how that works and why this is a nicer or better way to go than... Um, the other than the method that I had been using previously um, where there's just an error message and the program ends and, and I did that because I just wanted to keep things a little bit simpler but now as we progress through the class I want to introduce some some more advanced topics so um, at this stage the program explains what it does and it tells the user or prompts the user to enter one two or three so 
at this line, enter one, two, or three, if I put a four, the program repeats itself and says, well, I need you to enter one, two, or three. And if I put one here, it's just going to end because I haven't written anything else in the code. But you can see how this is a little bit better, a little more graceful than simply terminating the program. So <clears throat> let's assume, or not assume, let's test and see if the user entered one. If the user entered one, uh, the user apparently knows the base and height. So we want to prompt the user to enter those variables. Base equals float input enter the base height equals float input enter the height the area equals one half times base times height and we can print the area of the triangle is area like that let's let's just add a comment here that if we get to this block of code the area is one half base times height now what about this section? Area equals one half side one times side two times the sine of the angle in between them. And I would encourage you to revisit the video I did on triangle areas to refresh your memories. So if we get here, we want to test to make sure that the type is 2. We have side 1. Let me do a little copying and pasting here. Side 1 equals enter side 1. Side 2 equals enter side 2. And angle equals enter the angle between them. Like that. And actually, let's change this a little bit. Enter the angle in degrees. And what we're going to do at this stage is we're going to define a new variable, angle radians, which converts angle from degrees to radians. And there is a built-in Python function, but um, this is easy enough to do manually. So angle radians equals angle times math.pi divided by 180. So at this stage, we do area equals 1 half, or we can just simplify to 0.5 times side 1 times side 2 times the sine, so we do math.sine, of angle radian, like that. And then we use this print statement again, like that. The third case is where we use what's called the uh, heroes formula, and the area equals the square root of the semi perimeter times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c, where a, b, and c are the sides of the triangle, and s is the semi perimeter, meaning half of the perimeter. 
So let's make sure that the type is three. We have side one equals float input enter side one. Let's copy this. Now we have side two and side three. So we just have to edit this a little bit. Then we uh, implement Hero's formula. So area equals math dot square root. Actually, before we do that, let's calculate the semi-perimeter. SP equals side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3. Divided by 2. And then Hero's formula. Area equals square root SP times SP minus side 1 times semi-perimeter minus side 2 times SP minus side 3. And then we print, copy and paste this. Save it, and let's run. So first of all, let's say the user en enters 5 here. They don't know how to read very well, and they enter 5. So the, the program automatically prompts them again. So if we enter 1 here, the base, let's say the base is 3, the height is 4, uh, and the program then calculates the area to be 6. Let's run it again. Let's try option two, where the user knows two sides and the angle. So enter three for side one, four for side two, and 90 degrees for the angle they form. And we get six again. Let's run it a third time. Let's enter three. We use hero's formula. So let's say it's a three, four, five right triangle, and we get six a third time. So it appears to be working well. Notice in this program, I didn't do any checking for negative values, but I think you uh, are very familiar with how to do that. And in a complete implementation of this program, we would we'd probably want to add those checks. Anyway, that's it for tonight, and I will see you next time. Thanks.